I'll be back. And you did, Terminator. You did come back. And that's what I'm talking about today. Welcome to the video. It was me guys, so recently I watched the new Terminator Genesis movie, and at the first glimpse I saw of it, I knew I had to do a review of it. So here we go, but before we get into all of the fun stuff, I just want to come with a disclaimer. This review will contain a lot of spoilers, so if you have not watched the movie, then go do that before watching this video. Alright, so let's get going. Before we get into what I think of the movie and my actual review, I just want to very shortly tell you what the movie is about. Alright, it's 2029 and we're introduced into the story by Kyle Reese who tells us about the new T-800 robots from the company Cyberdyne. He also tells us about John Connor, the only hope left for humankind. John Connor is the only man who has a chance at stopping the Terminators and Cyberdyne knows this, so they send the Terminator back in time to 1984 to kill Sarah Connor, John's mother, before she has even given birth to him. To stop this, Kyle is sent back to 1984 to save Sarah, but when he arrives he discovers that she has a guardian who is already protecting her. Of course, it's the Terminator. Together they all go to 2017 to stop the activation of the Genesis app who is going to consume the world and enslave the humans. They succeed by getting into the core mainframe of Skynet, which is the Genesis, and blowing the entire place up. Alright, so that was a very brief recap. I didn't tell you all of what happened. For example, that Kyle Reese is also John Connor's father, or that John Connor actually gets turned into a part of Skynet and becomes evil, but if I were to explain every single detail that happened in this movie for you, we would be here all night, because so much stuff happens in this movie. Alright, so let's get into my review of this brilliant movie. First of all, I want to talk about how awesome this movie is. No, seriously, it is important for me to talk about how awesome this movie really is. They spend about $155 million on this movie, and it clearly shows. Absolutely amazing graphics, amazing CGI, everything is just done so freaking amazing, and big budgeted style, and I love that. Also, it was so cool to see the old Schwarzenegger bag in action. I was so afraid that he might be too old to pull it off, but I was happily surprised especially after the 2009 letdown. It's clear that Arnold Schwarzenegger can still kick some serious bad guy ass. Also, the whole skipping back and forward in time really reminds me of this British TV show that I really wish that this movie had actors from. Oh wait! Freaking Matt Smith! Alright, so to quickly sum it up for you guys, I am a massive Doctor Who fan, so I was so thrilled to see what I know as the 11th Doctor in this movie as Skynet. He was such a badass! But anyways, let's move on before I go on a 20 minute rant about it. But all in all, this movie is so freaking cool and really worth the money. But it did sadden me that there wasn't any more people in the movie theater seeing it, at least when I went to see it. Let me lay it out for you. Alright, so I went to see the movie at the 15th of July, when the movie had only been out for six days in my country. And there were only like eight people in the freaking entire cinema. I mean, what the hell? But maybe it's because of the unexcited Danes, but it just really saddened me because of how awesome this movie truly was and because of how much money they actually spent on this movie. The only real critique I have for this movie is the whole romance bit between Kyle Reese and Sarah Connor. I know they had to fall in love because she had to give birth to John Connor and he was also the father of John Connor and all that stuff, but it would just be so nice to see a movie, especially a Terminator movie, where that was just skipped just for once. That's also my primal complaint about the other Terminator movies, the first three ones. There was just way too much romance. I mean, who actually goes to the movie theater to see a Terminator movie because of the romance part? That's right. We want to see cool robots and cool special effects and buses rolling over bridges and time travel. We don't want to see all that boring shit romance part that is in every fucking Terminator movie. It's just really boring. But really though, this Terminator movie was definitely the best of the Terminator movies ever because of one simple reason. The evolving technology. Back in 1984 and 1991 when the first two Terminator movies came out, they simply didn't have the advanced technology that we have today to make this kind of special effects. Get out. All in all, I give this movie 4 out of 5 stars because it is genuinely one of my favorite films ever and definitely the best Terminator film yet. But the reason why I can't give it 5 out of 5 is because of the romance part, which I felt like took up way too big chunks of this movie. I mean, in the ending, it seemed like the whole world was revolving around Sarah Connor. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
all of the stuff that had happened throughout the movie, all of the stuff that they have prevented, and the Skynet, and the Terminators, and the robots, and all that stuff, had just been for little pretty Sarah Connor so that she could live the life that she wanted to. I mean, cry me a fucking river. Anyways, that's it for me this week. You guys, thank you for watching this review of the new Terminator movie. I would definitely advise you to go watch it. I will see you guys next week. Bye. So the movie starts with Lord being in, in this mental institution where he's been for the last 20 years. And Harry comes to visit him every single day.